Do I sense the call of the Lord Jesus to be sent out on a mission? Food for Soul and Goa Co-working present today's readings and reflection. July 8, 2021. Thursday of the 14th week in Ordinary Time. A reading from the book of Genesis. Judah approached Joseph and said, I beg you, my Lord, let your servant speak earnestly to my Lord, and do not become angry with your servant, for you are the equal of Pharaoh. My Lord asked your servants, Have you a father or another brother? So he said to my Lord, We have an aged father and a young brother, the child of his old age. This one's full brother is dead. And since he is the only one by that mother who is left, his father dotes on him. Then you told your servants, Bring him down to me, that my eyes may look on him. Unless your youngest brother comes back with you, you shall not come into my presence again. When we return to your servant, our father, we reported to him the words of my Lord. Later, our father told us to come back and buy some food for the family. So we reminded him, We cannot go down there. Only if our youngest brother is with us can we go, for we may not see the man if our youngest brother is not with us. Then your servant, our father, said to us, As you know, my wife bore me two sons. One of them, however, disappeared, and I had to conclude that he must have been torn to pieces by wild beasts. I have not seen him since. If you now take this one away from me too, and some disaster befalls him, you will send my white head down to the netherworld in grief. Joseph could no longer control himself. In the presence of all his attendants, so he cried out, Have everyone withdraw from me. Thus no one else was about when he made himself known to his brothers. But his sobs were so loud that the Egyptians heard him and so the news reached Pharaoh's palace. I am Joseph, he said to his brothers. Is my father still in good health? But his brothers could give him no answer, so dumbfounded were they at him. Come closer to me, he told his brothers. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you once sold into Egypt. But now do not be distressed and do not reproach yourselves for having sold me here. It was really for the sake of saving lives that God sent me here ahead of you. The Word of the Lord The Responsorial Psalm, the response is, Remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land and ruined the crop that sustained them, He sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains, till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Alleluia, Alleluia. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Without cost you have received. Without cost you are to give. Do not take gold or silver or copper for your belts. No sack for the journey, or a second tunic, or sandals, or walking stick. The laborer deserves his keep. 
Whatever town or village you enter, look for a worthy person in it and stay there until you leave. As you enter a house, wish it peace. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. If not, let your peace return to you. Whoever will not receive you or listen to your words, go outside that house or town and shake the dust from your feet. Amen, I say to you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection on today The benevolence of God is manifested in today's readings. The story of Joseph continues as he reveals himself to his brothers. The psalmist retells the story of Joseph focusing on God's fulfillment of the divine plan of providing for the chosen people. In the Gospel reading, Jesus apostles the twelve with the mission to proclaim the good news and he commands them to trust that God will provide for them. Today's reading from Genesis is the conclusion of the passage in which Joseph's brothers return to Egypt with their youngest brother, Benjamin, Joseph's full brother. Today's pericope is the reader's digest version and conclusion of the whole passage. If one would read the whole story, we would hear that after the brothers have purchased the provision a second time, they leave. Joseph has ordered that their money be returned and that his own silver goblet be placed in Benjamin's bags. When the brothers are stopped and their bags searched, Joseph's silver goblet is found in Benjamin's bag. The brothers are shocked and dismayed. Judah, in whose care Benjamin has been placed, is willing to be punished in place of Benjamin, thus becoming a goal or redeemer. It is at this point that Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. He explains that he is not angry with them for their selling him into slavery. He recognizes the providence of God in the act. As if Joseph had not been led away to Egypt, the children of Jacob, Israel would have suffered the effects of the famine striking their part of the world. The psalmist praises the forethought and kindness of God who was able to save the chosen people even though the ten brothers of Joseph had sold him into slavery. God's providence surpasses the evil plans of mortals. God is kind and merciful and forgiving. In the Gospel, Jesus' apostles, sends out, 12 on their mission, job for which one is sent. They are to proclaim the good news and trust in God. They are to take no extra supplies, money, nor travel accessories. Those to whom they are being sent will receive them with shalom, peace, because they announce the message of the Prince of Shalom. Since they come in the name of the Lord of Shalom, those who are open to the message of Jesus will lovingly receive them and take care of the Apostles' needs. Those who are not ready to embrace the Gospel, will face the consequences. Whatever happens, God will provide for those sent, up. God's plan will be carried out. God's message will be preached. As I reflect on the readings I am once again bolstered by the magnificence of God. God makes sure that those who have the divine mission will have their needs met. I again think back on the Mission Impossible show. Although our mission may meet some of opposition and challenges as that of the IMF, Impossible Mission Force, we have one thing going for us that the IMF did not have. The IMF were told that if they fell into enemy hands, those who sent them would disavow any knowledge of, or connection with, them. The opposite is true for those sent to do God's mission. God promises to not only acknowledge those who are on their divinely directed mission, but to provide for them in ways beyond their expectations. What was true for the twelve sent out by Jesus is also true for us who continue God's mission. We, the modern-day missionaries and apostles, are to continue the announcement of the good news of the Lord Jesus. God will take care of us when we are doing the work of Jesus and his Abba Father. That is the work we are to do. If we proclaim the gospel at all times, even using words, if necessary, God will meet our needs and bestow blessings on us. That does not mean we will not meet opposition and rejection, non-acceptance by other people is part of the deal also. It may mean we have to suffer, even in jail, for possibly many years, as did Joseph after being sold as a slave by his brothers. Yet, 
all things will work together for those who are called by God and labor according to God's plan, Romans 8, 28. That is God's promise and God never disavows the divine promises or those who seek to do God's will. There will come a time, maybe not until we are in the heavenly reign, when we, like Joseph and the psalmist today, can look back and see the providence of God in the events of our lives. In response to all of this, and only join the refrain of the responsorial today and pray, remember the marvels the Lord has done. The personal question, action for today. Do I sense the Lord Jesus to be sent out on a mission? To whom am I being sent? Members of my family? Co-workers? Friends? People in my worshipping community? How can I better give witness to the good news by the way I deal with those to whom God is sending me? How can I support other who are living out their call to be apostles and missionaries? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, ever loving and always providential. Through your goodness, you have promised to be with and take care of those who do your will. We have sometimes failed to trust in you as we have faced hard and challenging times. For those failures to trust you, we seek your pardon and forgiveness. You have sent your Son, Jesus, to live on this earth. In his earthly existence he met opposition, rejection, and persecution, yet he relied on your providence. Through the further outpouring of your Holy Spirit, help us to learn from our Master Teacher and trust completely in your loving care for us. May we fulfill the mission on which you sent us, to announce your message to those whom you have entrusted to us. May we always give you thanks and praise as we remember the marvels you have done not just in ancient times, but in our lives today. We make this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Brother and Savior, our Master Teacher and Lord, our Goal, Redeemer, who is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Compiled by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice. Peace. Integrity. Creation. JPIC. Capuchin Goa.